Hello, this is going to be a short video showing you guys how to bake uh, in Marmoset Tobac. I'll probably do, well, I'm actually going to do two videos about it. One with a very simple asset, which is what I'm going to do right now. And another video, I'll do one with a character with different texture sets and all the complicated stuff. But for now, I'll just do something very basic. Uh, first thing that I need, like to do is load both my high poly and low poly. There's a quick loader on the baker here in Marmoset that will load those measures in the specific portion, but you have to have uh, a naming convention for that, which sometimes whenever I'm, I'm doing things fast because I'm, it's just for my own personal work, um, I just like to load them manually because it doesn't take a long time. So I'm just going to load them both. I'm going to go back to my meshes and I have my pillar I show when I'm, I'm going to load a pillar. Yeah, so this is going to be a low poly stylized asset, and you're going to see the difference between this guy and the high poly one. And let me see, here it is. Okay, so here they are. A couple of things that I want to show you guys uh, before I continue is since this tutorial is meant to, for total beginners. There are a couple of things that you need to know when baking. Uh, number one, your the objects, both the high poly and the low poly that you're baking, they need to be exactly in the same position of the universe, preferably in the center, but they both need to be occupying the same space, like I'm doing it right now. So if I press my pillar, you're going to see my pillar is occupying exactly the same coordinates as my... Uh, the low poly is occupying the same coordinates as the high poly. And the reason being is that you want your cage to perfectly surround your high and low poly so you don't get any errors. So make sure that you go when you are exporting your model for baking in whatever 3D um, package you're using, Maya, Blender, uh, 3D Studio Max, whatever, make sure you have both uh, meshes, the high and the low poly occupying the same coordinates in this uh, in the universe. So the other thing that I want to show you guys um, that I think is very important when baking and I've seen some people, uh, especially in the Facebook group, having problems with this is smoothing groups. So I'm going to turn off my high poly and uh, I use 3D Studio Max mostly uh, and they're called smoothing groups in Maya. They, they're called hardened edges, I think. But uh, as you can see, even though if I press, let me turn on wireframe. So if you see my wireframe, you're going to see that um, this, this two, this three pieces, even though this guy's very low poly, if I turn off my wireframe, you're going to see that this guy is smooth right here. So this is what I call smoothing groups because I'm a Max user. Uh, again, they might have other names in Blender, Maya, or whatever other program you're using. But make sure you set this, uh, the smoothing groups because if you don't, if you don't set your uh, smooth surface, then when you are baking, you're going to bake like this. Then you're going to see the jagged edges from each single polygon, which is something that you don't want uh, when you're baking. So make sure you set that up before exporting your low poly acid. And that's really going to help your bakes look very nice. It's actually mostly mandatory because you don't want your bakes to have those jagged edges um, all around your model. Uh, one rule of thumb that I have is whenever I have a change in uh, an angle that's very sharp, like in here, usually I I have that um, this edge to be uh, sharp as opposed to smooth like this one. And that also depends on how you set your high poly, uh, depending whether you have damage or whatever details you have on your high poly. Uh, that's also going to depend on which of your edges are smooth and which of your edges are crisp, crisp like this. Another thing to take into account is unwrapping. So if you're unwrapping a model for baking, you have to make sure that your details are, are baked on the smoother surface and not like, let's say if I had like a crisp edge going from here to here, you'll really see that, um, that difference when I'm baking. But uh, make sure you have your unwrapping done to the edges, especially for hard surface things like this. 
uh, it's actually easier on easier to find out on organics and characters but when when doing hard surface make sure you have your unwrap and your crisp edges in places where they are going to favor your baking okay all right that's a lot of rambling so i'm just going to go back to baking and i'm going to add my bread which is the new baker click here and i'm going to load the meshes where they should go so i know this one's my low and i know this one's my high poly okay once they're loaded we're gonna click on low and this is where you're gonna see your cage so if you're fairly new to 3d art um, this is something that every single baker use uh, it's not shown in substance painter but if you were to bake in a 3d package you're also going to see this cage and the good thing about marmoset is that it already gives you a cage you don't have to set that cage up before you can if you wanted to but you don't have to i think you can uh wait no never mind i don't think you can load your cage yet i don't see any option to load your cage but anyways marmoset creates your creates a cage for you and uh, uh, that's very useful because you don't have to spend time doing it now for this model it, it would be really easy to create a cage but if you're dealing with a character or an organic model uh, it will take a while so this saves a lot of time okay so one thing that I like to do before I start baking is check my cage so right now it's kind of far from my model so I can come here into the max offset tool or slider I can bring that down and it's going to give me this message. This is because I haven't set up uh, a path for my files. If you've already done this, you're not going to get this message. So I'm just going to set up a path for the files. I'm going to set it here in testing. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to keep the name. Um, I like to save it as a Photoshop document. You can save it as something else. It has many options. But again, <clears throat> sorry. I like to move the offset of my cage so it's not flush because some of the high poly might be sticking out. So just a little bit outside of my low poly. I'm making sure that everything is surrounded by the cage. Your high poly can be sticking out a little bit from the low poly, but your cage has to be completely surrounding your model. If there's a part of your model that's not surrounded by your cage, uh, that's going to give you errors and it's going to look terrible on whatever you're baking. Okay, I think we're good. Mm, yep, yes we are. So, since we're good, I'm going to go back to the baker. And here are some options. Again, I'm going to touch on these options more in depth when I'm doing the character. This is just a very basic bake. So uh, one of the things I like to do first is to do a test bake. The way you do a test bake is get everything to a minimum. So I'm going to leave this at 1K, make sure the samples are 4K. And I'm just going to bake the normal map because um, I don't need anything else for a test. So I'm just going to hit bake. And that was pretty quick. Uh, so this button will allow you to preview whatever you've baked. So in order to do that, so I can better look at my uh, baked normal map, I'm going to hide my high poly by toggling here. That toggles your high and low poly on and off. So that way I'm going to preview my normal map. And again, normal maps looking good. Make sure there are no errors. If there were any errors, then I'll have to go back into my cage and see what happened and whatnot. But again, this is very uh, easy bake and uh, something small for me to show you how to how to do the basic stuff when baking marmoset. So other things that I like to do is world normal object, which is the same as world space normal and substance painter curvature, ambient occlusion, and I like to add position, not height, position, and thickness. Because it's still sort of the same apps that you get in, in Substance Painter. So I like to bake all these. And since the bake went really nice, I'm going to toggle my high poly again on. 
what I'm going to do is bump this to 4K because it's easier to go from high res to low res if I need it, if it was needed for this project. And I'm going to bump my samples all the way to 16 to get the nice crisp um, bakes. All right. So once I'm done with everything, then I'm going to press bake. And this is going to take a while, so I'm going to pause the video right here. And I'll be right back when this thing is done. Okay, so it seems that it's done baking. Let's just take a look at how our maps turned out. I'm just going to hide this and I'm going to try my maps one by one. Uh, let me see, curvature is the most important to me. So I like, aside from my normals, curvature is very important when making stylized art. Thickness and ambient occlusion. Very nice. One thing that I forgot to do for my ambient occlusion, especially for this guy, was to go into the settings and make sure I checked on cavity because it adds cavity to the ambient occlusion, helps with areas that are brighter than expected. So this is very good for your um, for your hard surface assets. And so I'm going to check it. And another thing that I'm going to do is add floor occlusion just so I have the, that nice ambient occlusion from the bottom. So I'm actually going to rebake the ambient occlusion. I unchecked everything else but the ambient occlusion. I'm going to uh, press bake. Actually, I'm going to uncheck this. Uh, unhide my high poly. Press bake. And I'll, I'll be right back. Um, sorry about that. I just forgot the little bit of detail. So I'll be right back once it's done baking. Okay, it's done baking the ambient occlusion. So I'm going to make sure that baked okay. So I'm going to put it in. And I do like when I uh, put the cavity on and now I get that floor occlusion because there's nothing underneath. But if you put that floor occlusion, it's going to try to make a little bit of occlusion underneath your model. And since this is a model that's going to be uh, standing up, I, I rather have that ambient occlusion map in here. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get rid of my high poly. I'm going to get my low poly out of the baker. I get rid of the baker. And what I'm going to do is bring the maps in here. So I'm going to go in here. I'm actually going to put it to the side because it's easier. And I want to start bringing the maps to check them out, check to see how they look. And I'm going to, whoops, press, there you go. Got the normal map. Going to load the ambient occlusion. Actually, the other maps are just um, baked maps for, for things like Photoshop and Substance Painter, because that's how I create my stylized maps. And I'm going to load my ambient occlusion. And as you can see, object is looking very nice. I'm going to bring down the glossiness. And actually, I'm going to bring the specularity a little bit up. OK. Nice. So just so you guys see how it looks, I'm going to add a light to this scene. Maybe over here, I'm going to rotate it like this. OK. And here we have one good looking asset, nicely baked. And that was very easy, very straightforward. Um, and I'll show how to bake a character in another video, but for now, this is how you bake uh, basic assets. And that's why I use this very uh, low poly stylized pillar that I just made. Um, you're going to see this guy in another scene very soon. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe for more tutorials. And um, I'll be putting out another video very soon.